would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, and it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Okay, let's talk with you. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My oh my, what a surprise. <laughs> Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Ten francs, please, my dear. Ten francs? That's a rip-off. Please yourself. Do I have ten francs? How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed, were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a, a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Okay? Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Oh, that's sad to say. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the damp. The landlord said he'd fixed it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. Oh, that's... that's sad. Damn you, landlord! How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating, it's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. That's usually the case. Lady. She deserves better. True. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. Oh! Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Poor Nicole. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? <laughs> they are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris. The flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. <laughs> oh my god. You're so bad. Okay, how about showing you some face? Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. Okay. What do you make of this tool? Is it something a dentist would use? A dentist? For raising manhole covers. Holy oh, shit! A dentist? Human! Dentists are not that cruel. What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. Is it? What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. Fair enough. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Oh, will I? It's time to meet Nicole again, I think. 
The door was shabby and in need of a coat of paint. I couldn't imagine the Kolar woman living here. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently just above the lock. Bonjour. I am glad you could make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Okay. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. What's more, I know where he hired the clown suit, too. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck! Hard work, <laughs> I promise. What happened? I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you believe it? He told me to drop the story. But you're not about to do that. Oh, no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? It's a conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murder. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. So what's that exactly? May I use your telephone? Oh, that's sure. the phone. Go ahead. Thanks. That's the for the phone? It didn't look like a phone. Uh, no, I'm good. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arno Belota, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it! Millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives and his fortune went to the orphanage where he'd grown up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. I'm already lost. You first. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese green politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so. How did he die? At the end, or should I say, flippers of a giant emperor penguin. What? A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. <laughs> I don't blame you for being scared. <laughs> I am too. Oh my god. This story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. I found this false nose in the sewer. It has La Risée du Monde printed inside it. The laughing stock of the world. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint-Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Why don't you put it on, Josh? No way am I wearing this. I'd look really stupid. Besides, he might have had a cold. He did have a cold. So in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible! You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. What? I have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of okay. course. Okay. How can I help you? Okay. 
is a little bit a little bit different than all of us. That's okay. Somebody needs to run the costume shops. I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from him. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. The clown I'm looking for is a cold-blooded killer. Give me his name, and I'll see he's brought to justice. I'd help you if I could, but you can't expect me to remember all my customers. You see, the clown costume is our most popular line, monsieur. On average, we hire out more than 30 clown suits a week. You'll have to give me more to go by. A description, perhaps? Well, I have a photo. Do you recognize this man? Ah oui, he was here this morning. Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. Hey, what grease paint? How come clowns are so popular? I think it has something to do with their unpredictable nature. Personally, I think clowns should be banned, along with mimes. Oh, come now. Who doesn't love clowns? I never Maybe liked one. them, honestly. Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me Oh smell my this. god. Oh my god. Best Imers number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Okay. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two cans. About this tissue. I have already given you... About this tissue. I have yeah. already given you my professional opinion. Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. He chose two costumes. Bozo the clown and Seamus the pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. Oh, we're learning something. Okay. You can. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of expected that. What are you trying to do? Kill me? You did not find it amusing? <laughs> I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Um. Yes, I'm back. Can you go? Oh, goodness. can just go there. Come on, man. What's up with Nicole? Salut, Josh. What news? I've been to the costume shop. Yeah, I like it. What are you supposed to be? 
I didn't hire a costume. These are my clothes and you know it. Did you ask about the clown? Yeah. He used the name Khan. He hired two costumes, the clown and a pixie. Then we won't jump ahead of him. How do you make that out? He probably plans to use the pixie suit next time he kills. Oh, God, don't let it be me. I don't deserve to die at the hands <laughs> of the pixie. Don't be silly, George. That won't happen. Oh, no? No, because every time you see a pixie, you're going to run like hell. <laughs> uh, I like her.